And I'm so grateful that we were able to get here together today and talk about some of these things and, and share the findings that, you know, the theological implications of the findings, but also what we can do with the findings in our ministry and our young people going forward. Um, because I, I think there's a lot of um, nervousness around this. You know, Megan, you mentioned people are focused on the numbers in the pews. That makes a lot of yeah. sense to me. And yeah. people are wondering, you know, if I broach some topics, will I, you know, am I risking these, the, the new people that I, that I have here that I mm -hmm. desperately want to? It's kind of that desperate posturing you were talking yeah. about. But like the fact of the matter is, like you said, Megan, like you said, Cassandra, young people, Jen, they're already tuned in. They know about it, whether or not you're going to accompany them in thinking about it or not. Right. Uh, and they're already hold holding these in tension. They're already holding the realities of um, the church's role in the oppression of minoritized racial groups yeah. and genuinely held religious beliefs and practices in tension. Yep. Uh, and that should be, I think, kind of uh, hope in inducing little bit is that they're not throwing the, the baby out with the bath bar. Uh, and so, so like Cassandra said, are you going to, are you going to go to them? Are you going to watch the talk? Um, Cause they're, they're kind of modeling the, the courageous and vulnerability for us. Um, yeah, 100. Yeah, 100%. So, I, I just, I want to, um, I just notice you know, as you're, you're talking about kind of the, the courage and the risk uh, that is, is needed from us adults who are in these positions of, of power. Um, I, I just see that there's a, a comment and a, a question around, you know, how do we, how do we do this kind of work um, without getting fired? And that's a real concern. Um, and I, I work with youth workers uh, from around the country who are navigating this big question. And I, I don't have a, a just a, well, you do these three kind of steps and then that guarantees, but I do think there is a deep need for uh, the relational work um, that has to test, you know, youth workers themselves, I think, are, are in that, also in that tension of needing to navigate both the, the reality of standing firm um, in solidarity with your young people and doing the hard, long relational work of cultivating um, relationship and, and connection with, with the powers that be that are maybe standing um, on the necks of others, but there's something, you know, there's a, there's a moment uh, and a time to, um, to draw a line and to, to take a stand. I mean, I, I think that in the Christian tradition, we see that in how Jesus um, lives out Jesus's own ministry. We're, we're in the middle of Holy Week as we, we speak um, and thinking through the journey that Jesus takes to the cross. Um, and, you know, Jesus wasn't arrested for being a nice guy that um, made people feel good all the time. Jesus was arrested as a, a political prisoner because of the, the work that he did in society. Um, and, you know, that led to capital punishment. Um, there is there is something there that we like to gloss over. We like to spiritually bypass even our own narratives uh, around um, our, our theological traditions. And we really need to, to take some, um, take seriously what it means to, uh, to be believers in, in this kind of a gospel story. Um, so I just wanted to add that in as I see the, the difficult question, um, yeah. and friend who, who's here joining us and asking that question. I just prayers with you, um, and solidarity with you in, in that struggle. Yeah. Is it okay before we end? I just want to add something that you said, Megan, um, in terms of resistance, because I felt that way, yeah. um, working at a school for a few years, like, I think resistance doesn't have to be like something like a grand gesture, but it could just be just providing the space. So what I like to think of it in an education we call kind of like a second classroom, right? Like, so of course, not like hiding what you're doing, but like when you're in that community, like providing that space to wrestle. Mm. I think that's something also, like, I think we think we need to have these grand gestures to show in solidarity, but just in terms of when you are with the youth, are you a safe space, right? And I know that, and I'm being careful with that, like, like, do you provide them, do you, it, do you hold space for them that they feel comfortable having these conversations with you? And I think a lot of that work can empower youth where it doesn't seem like your, 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 your livelihood is um, at, on the line. And, I, and, and I'm just speaking from my experience yeah. as a teacher, 
in institutions where they don't want to talk about these things, just giving them that space. It, and it's not really a cop out, but I think that's important for us to re remind just being present. Um, and that that in, in itself and just holding that space is is also a sign of resistance too. I love that. Cassandra, it's so true. And I'll bring the social science in one last time. Uh, as a social scientist is, you know, we even see in the research the impact of one trusted adult yeah. in our life. One trusted adult who can provide that space to wrestle, as you put it, Cassandra, goes such a long way in belonging, in a number of wealth. Um, I mean, the list goes on and on. 